So the way I tend to try and grade uh, cases of MGD in practice, I like to keep it as simple as I can. So I tend to operate across the board uh, a typical zero to four grading scheme for, for more or less all the things I'm, I'm grading when I'm reviewing a dry eye case. Uh, so in terms of glands, um, zero would be that all glands are patent and it's clear and runny when you express. Uh, but in Mr. P's case, he had uh, obviously a little bit uh, of uh, clouding uh, with his mybum, but it was uh, runny. So I would grade his, his mybum uh, as grade one. But as you saw earlier in his mybography scores, it, he has much worse atrophy than we would perhaps expect from a, a grade one uh, viscosity. This image here uh, of a different patient just shows you as well um, the individuality, if you like, of the disease. So you don't necessarily expect uh, two adjacent glands to be uh, showing the same level of viscosity. So you do get variation across a single eyelid uh, between grade one and grade four um, because it is almost a gland or a, a disease of individual glands so it's important to to look at all the glands present uh, and assess them individually as well uh, so this is just uh, an image showing you um, a, a gland of mole here so uh, when you express the the mybum obviously you're putting quite a bit of pressure on the lip, lip margin uh, and in doing so um, you'll express other glands as well so this is an example of a, a, a gland of mole there so this is a, a patient of mine that has a hyper secretory state uh, uh, of MGD. So when I see him, uh, he produces a, a vast excess uh, of very thick mybum uh, that we uh, that we remove periodically. So when we think about the location of the orifices. Uh, uh, on the mybum glands and the lib margin, um, the tear prism sits just behind uh, the orifices themselves uh, and as a consequence when the mybum is uh, secreted in a normal way it then flows right onto the surface of the tear film because it's uh, sort of in, in adjacent or in contact with that part uh, of the tears uh, and when um, you um, studies have shown when people get older um, that you can naturally find that Marx's line which is the 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 junction between um, carotenized skin, the sort of mucocutaneous junction and the mucous membrane, um, actually migrates forward with age um, away from the cornea. Uh, and the problem with that is that slowly what can happen uh, is that Marx's line will engulf the mybome gland orifices. Uh, and then uh, the issues anatomically are that the oil, the, the mybum is secreted into the aqueous phase uh, of the tear film uh, and then contributes less effectively uh, to the lipid layer. And this effect is irreversible. Uh, you tend to see it more in dry eye cases, but it's a, an age related problem full stop. Uh, so it is also important to have a look for this uh, in clinic uh, to see the effect uh, of um, those changes. Uh, so these images. On the left, uh, you can see uh, my bone gland orifice, uh, which is the, the small dot uh, highlighted with fluorescein there. Um, and this one has not been engulfed by Marx's line. So this is sitting anatomically in the correct location, if you like. Uh, and the one on the right here has been engulfed by Marx's line. So it's a different gland on the same uh, patient. Uh, and the problem with that gland is that it's going to be secreting its mybum uh, into the wrong part. Of